and welcome to Church at Home. Though we might not be able to gather together as a group, we can gather together online. Now we have the opportunity to sing together, to pray together, to hear a message together, me in my house and you in yours. And before we get started, I want to share a verse with you. It's in 1 Chronicles 16.34. It reads, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. That word steadfast, it means unmovable, unshakable, it is grounded. Other translations that talk about God's love, it says His love never fails, His love never quits, His faithful love endures forever. So God's love is a love that is grounded, that is sure, that is faithful, that never quits, and that never fails. That puts a song in our heart, in our mouth. So today with me, let us together give thanks to the Lord in song for His unfailing love. Bearing beneath my shame, who carried that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met.
excited for the opportunity to pray, but as we prepare to pray, I want to challenge you with this one thought. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas found themselves in, in prison. And it says in verse 25 and 26, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. You know, as we pray, um, we need to understand that, that prayer isn't just to make ourselves feel good. Um, it isn't to give ourselves uh, spiritual warm fuzzies, but it actually does things physically here on earth. In fact, Jesus said, when you pray, uh, pray, Lord, what, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, and so we're going to pray this uh, today, and we're going to pray that God uh, meets physical needs, that God eradicates the virus, um, that, that God um, meets every, every financial need. Um, that God does uh, um, things here on earth, not just in the in the spiritual realm, but but physically as well. And now let's join a few of our family members as we pray together. Father, we gather together in prayer today, asking for favor and grace to be on our government leaders. Father, we are so thankful to have a president and a vice president who openly declare their dependence on you, their faith in you, and their need for prayer. And so, Father, with that, we ask that they would look to you for wisdom, divine wisdom, heavenly wisdom in these tough times, in this difficult time of, of making hard decisions. Father, that they would believe in you and trust in you. And we pray that for all of our leaders, our federal, state, and local leaders would all look to you for divine guidance. And Lord, we pray also for all of those in the workforce, medical fields, the grocery stores, everywhere that people are out there serving you. Father, we pray that the believers would take Psalm 91 as their anthem, that your faithfulness is a shield. And though a thousand may fall at their side, 10,000 may fall at their right hand, this pestilence will not come near. And that becomes our anthem, Lord. That becomes our declaration. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you boldly today for an eradication of the COVID-19 virus. God, you're the ultimate physician. You're the ultimate healer. You're the ultimate source of knowledge and wisdom, God. Just give that wisdom. Let the researchers, let the physicians working on this virus, Lord, um, tap into your deep knowledge, God. Guide them as they research, as they study with this rapidly evolving virus, Lord, that they will identify um, solutions, that we will identify vaccines, we will identify cures. God, we pray for your healing hand, your healing touch on all those infected with the virus right now, Lord, that you would just provide healing in hospitals, that you'd continue to provide strength and encouragement and longevity to the healthcare workers serving them, Lord. We ask you this in your name. Father, we just come to you today in asking for provision for your church, for your people, for our families, that as we all work through these times that you have provided this challenge for us, that we lean on you, lean on you for your truth and for your provision, that you are going to provide for us in abundance in this time frame, that we are going to continue to seek for the more and stretch our financial muscle, knowing that you will provide for each one of our families, for our church, for our communities, so that we can reach outside our church walls and assist another person through your love and just through the means that you're giving each one of us. Father, help us to be generous in our giving, both to our tithings, to our vision offering, and to any COVID-19 support that we can um, demonstrate through our love and through our commitment to seeing your church grow. And Lord, we thank you for these things because I know through your promises that you will provide for each and every one of us. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we lift up C3 Church today. Globally, Phil and Chris, nationally, Jurgen and Leanne, and our home church at C3 Southwest Washington, Stephen and Rowena, Jared and Jennifer, Saxon and Shannon, we love them and we thank you for their love and their faithfulness towards your people. 
We ask that you grant them the wisdom and a vision for your future, the strength and energy and determination to pursue it. We ask these things according to your glorious and abundant riches in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to use us during this season to see many people's hearts turn towards God. Let those who have never known you or maybe have drifted away from you be brought to understand your healing, your love, and your forgiveness, Lord. Help them to experience the abundance of your spirit. Help us to be ambassadors of your goodwill and for the church to actually grow in this time. Let that which was intended for evil be made to do good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for praying together with us. We know that prayer is powerful, and as we pray together, we know that heaven comes down and causes things to shift on earth for the better. Absolutely. We're having a food drive. We're partnering with Pastor Seth and Karen Brooks and the C3 Church Food Pantry in Northeast Portland to help with the high demand of groceries in their region. Their team has been doing an absolutely incredible job each week of feeding hundreds of families. The demand has been huge and we're jumping in to give a hand. We're asking every family in our church to put together at least one bag of non-perishable food items and then drop them off at the C3 Hub on either Tuesday, May 5th or Thursday, May 7th between the hours of 10 and 2. We'll be delivering the food on Friday, May 8th to be dispersed on Saturday, May 9th. Church, I know we can do this well. If you need more information, please contact Trisha Humphrey. Hey C3 Kids families, you can find additional content for today's gatherings on our website and on our C3 Kids Facebook page. There you can also get updates, additional resources, and post pictures of your week. This week we have several fun activities for you to enjoy, including our Tuesday 11 a.m. Junior Kids Hangout on Facebook. Also Thursday 11 a.m. our Senior Kids are having a Facebook Hangout. And then 11 a.m. there's an exercise class on Facebook. We'll see you this week online. Hi, C3 Kids. I'm Eliana. I wanted to show you one of the most thankful memories from my thankful journal. This is a picture of when I first got adopted. Well, right here are the two are the two women who brought me out to my mom and dad. The, the first staff woman is saying, goodbye, I'm going to miss you. And then my mom is saying, I can't wait to dress her up. And then my dad is saying, I'm going to cry. That's my that's my older brother of London. He was there to see my mommy. Oh, these are angels. I felt like when I was first born, I thought I felt like they're like watching over me when I was being brought out and like they were close to me. Oh, this is God. He's mm -hmm. saying, You're in good hands. Um, if you want to draw a picture too, you can you can um, draw a picture of your favorite thank thankful memory, and then you can post on the C Three Kids Facebook page, and you can show us your picture and your work and what you're most thankful for, and have a journal for it and everything. It's gonna be really fun. And, well, that's all I have for you today. Well, bye bye. Attention all students, join us every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. on Instagram for our My City live stream. There we'll catch up with one another, hear about any quick updates we have, and also hear from one of our youth leaders. Hope to see you there. Also, be sure to sign up to be part of our online student small groups known as Cadres. Cadres meet every week and are led by one of our incredible youth leaders. Don't miss out. We have a couple of events for you guys coming up over the next few weeks. First of all, we are having Operation Reshoot in which we are challenging each student to reshoot one of three iconic scenes from popular movies. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. There will be prizes, so be sure to get your submissions in by Sunday, April 26th. On May 1st at 5 p.m. on Zoom, we are gonna have our first online game night. It's going to be chaotic, it's going to be intense, but above all, it is going to be loads of fun, so make plans to be there. Any information on the two events can be found both on the church website as well as the youth Instagram page. Our online connect groups have officially launched and they have been amazing. 
We currently have 10 groups meeting weekly for about 30 to 45 minutes using the Zoom app. They're filled with fun, laughter, light discussion, prayer, and maybe the occasional awkward silence or technical glitch. Did I say laughter? If you have yet to get connected, visit our website and register today. We don't want you to miss out. Today I have the incredible privilege to receive the tithe and the offering. And as you prepare to give, know that you can give online through our church app, but you can also mail your check to our church address where someone regularly checks the mail. As you prepare to give, there are several verses I'd love to draw your attention to out of the book of Proverbs, chapter number three, verses nine through 10. There it says to honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. I know some of you are thinking, what does this portion of scripture have to do with me? I don't own a barn. I don't have any vats. I don't make wine. I'm not a farmer. But you need to know this verse has everything to do with you today. I would think that the life of a farmer is incredibly difficult. Not only is it really hard work, but there are so many things that would fight against the crop every single year. It could be too hot, too cold, too much sun, not enough sun, too much rain, not enough rain, rain at the completely wrong time. Fire, frost, freak storms, parasites, rodents, birds, thieves. Every crop faces so many dangers from the moment it's planted all the way up until harvest time. Full barns and full vats might be the goal, but there's absolutely no guarantee. In fact, the idea of Barns filled with plenty and bats bursting with wine? That's almost ridiculous. But that is exactly what these verses speak to in spite of all the dangers that every crop faces. And I know you may not have a barn and I know you may not have a vat, you may not make wine, you might not be a farmer, but you do have a job, you do have investments, you have bank accounts, you have resources, you have a career. And this promise is absolutely for every single one of us. And this promise is activated when we do two things. Number one, when we honor the Lord with our wealth. That means anything that comes our way, that we honor God with it. Whether it's money, or it's your home, it's your car, your possession, your investment, the key here is to honor God with your wealth. And that activates the promise that we're talking about. Secondly, the promise is activated when we honor God with the first fruits of all of our crops. It's speaking specifically of the idea of taking the first tenth of every increase and returning it to the house of the Lord. So many of us have experienced the fulfillment of this promise in our lives over and over and over. It's amazing that in this season, I've talked with several families who are experiencing the fulfillment of this promise right now. I've even talked with a few families that are out of work due to the COVID season, and yet they are in a better financial position than they normally are. And I wanna say this promise does not just apply to our families, it applies to our church as well. Our church is always striven to honor the Lord with everything we own, and additionally, we have always honored Him with our first fruits of every increase. We've always given 10 plus percent out to support church plants, to give to other people in need, to support the work of God all around the world. Here's the crazy thing for our church in this COVID-19 season. The month of March was every bit as strong a giving month as we have ever had. The month of April, this month, not even finished yet, we have actually experienced a 30% increase in general giving. And the month's not even done yet. In the months of March and April, over $30,000 has come into our Vision Builder offering, making a grand total of about $60,000 in the year 2020. This means we've been able to give an extra $50,000 to our facilities fund and place another $10,000 in our outreach fund. We are in the middle of a global pandemic and yet we are watching our barns be filled to overflowing, our vats bursting forth with new wine. This is because the promise of God rings true all the time. And I just want to invite those of you who have yet to participate in this promise of God to consider doing so 
during this season. Why not trust God at his word today? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each person listening. I pray over their finances. I pray blessing. God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. We're so thankful how you meet our needs. And I know that this is a concerning time, a difficult time, but Father, we still honor you with all of our wealth. We still give the first fruits of our increase. And in so doing, Lord, I expect that even in the times of desert, you'll cause the crocus flower to bloom. You'll cause our finances to be blessed. You'll take care of every need and allow us to continue to be generous, not only as individuals, but as a church family. I pray for your help with finances, with jobs, with employment, Father, with all things financial. For each person listening, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you as you give. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Family, 
Let's take a few moments to jump into the Word of God. I'm excited about what God's Word has to say to each and every one of us today. It's living, it's active, it's relevant, and it will help both you and I. We are in a season of social distancing. Six feet apart, staying separate, trying to keep from spreading a disease, flattening the curve. I want to tip my hat to the creativity of the many social distancers doing whatever you can to stay safe, doing whatever you can to keep from getting sick, doing whatever you can to keep from spreading germs to others. I'm not sure all of these methods are effective. I'm not sure some of these methods aren't more dangerous than Corona itself. But that being said, I'm not going to criticize you for your effort. In fact, I'm going to applaud your creativity. I most certainly will possibly ponder your thought process, but I am thankful that you gave me something to do with my spare time. I appreciate your efforts to stay safe, to stay away, to social distance during this time of coronavirus. Social distancing wasn't part of our vocabulary a few months ago, but the concept has been around for a very, very long time. I knew a little boy that before he was potty trained, when he had to go number two, you know what I'm talking about, he would suddenly get quiet, his eyes would begin to zip back and forth, looking for a secret place to go and hide, to distance himself from other people, where they wouldn't see what he needed to do. When he found one, he would secretly make his way, sometimes going the opposite direction to throw everyone off, hoping that no one would notice, and once there, distanced, he would take care of his business. His number two, his corona. And after he was all done, he would make his way back to the group, hopefully unnoticed, his actions hidden to all. There is something deep within every one of us that drives us to keep our number twos hidden, secret, distance from everyone else. Our failures, our weaknesses, our struggle, our sin, our coronavirus. We go to great lengths to hide them from others, from our friends, from our family, sometimes from people we don't even know, and from God, especially from Him. We don't just hide our number two from God, we hide from God when we've done a number two our coronavirus, our sin. It's human nature. In fact, it's quite common as you read the Bible. When Adam was in the garden, he sinned. And you know what his reaction? Genesis 3, 7 says he felt naked, exposed, embarrassed, insecure. Adam absolutely felt shame for what he had done. But then in Genesis 3, 8, God showed up just like any other normal day. And those feelings of nakedness, insecurity, and exposure, they skyrocketed. So Adam hid. Maybe he won't see me. Maybe he won't miss me. Maybe he'll forget all about me. But of course, God doesn't forget. God does miss him. God looks for him and sees him. And he asks, Adam, why are you hiding? And Adam responds, I heard your voice. It made me afraid, so I hid. That is so strange. Why would God's voice suddenly make Adam afraid? He had never been afraid of God prior to this. God had never done anything to threaten Adam. And yet, with sin, with a number two, a coronavirus, the byproduct is a fear of God. They say that coronavirus has some strange side effects. Loss of taste, loss of smell, heart issues, lung issues, sometimes even delirium. And sin likewise, our coronavirus, has some similarly strange side effects. Our perception gets distorted, common sense goes completely out the door. Instead of running to the one who can help us, who wants to help us, we go the other way. We're afraid of what he will think, what he'll say, maybe what he'll do. It wasn't just Adam who did this. Moses did the same thing. In Exodus 3, 6, God speaks to Moses, and Moses' immediate reaction is to hide himself from God. In Exodus 20, the Israelites felt the exact same way. God spoke to them, and they were fearful. They trembled. They stood back, and they told Moses, you go talk to God. We're afraid. Isaiah was a godly man, but in chapter 6 of his book, 
he had a face-to-face -face encounter with God. He saw the Lord high upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his robe filled the temple. Isaiah's reaction? Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the middle of a people with unclean lips. He was afraid because of his sin. The same is true of Peter in the New Testament. He met Jesus one day while Jesus was preaching by the lake. Peter had spent the entire night fishing, but Jesus asked to use his boat to teach the people. They pushed out, Jesus taught, and after they were done, Jesus instructed Peter to throw his nets out for a great catch. Peter responded, Lord, we fished all night and we caught nothing. But because it's you, I will honor your request. Luke 5 and 6 says they caught so many fish that the boat began to sink and Peter signaled his friends to come and they filled their boats with fish as well. It was a miracle. And it was at that moment that Peter recognized Jesus to be connected deeply with God. And he falls on his knees and he says, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. We need distance. I have coronavirus. I have sin. It's our internal human reaction. When we have sin, when we've done a number two, when we have coronavirus, to go the opposite direction and socially distance from God. But there are three key things that I want you to grab onto today. First, Jesus doesn't practice social distancing. Your corona, your sin, your number two, never causes Jesus to distance himself. In our mind, he's probably social distancing, and so we might as well also. We begin to pull away. We begin to lean back in prayer, Bible reading, worship, church attendance, spiritual activities, because we feel like God doesn't want to be around us. As a young Christian, I remember feeling exactly that way. During the week, I would struggle with some sort of sinful thought or behavior. And I could remember walking into church feeling shamed, feeling like God didn't want to be around me. And so as the service began to proceed, I didn't participate. I felt like my leaning in would be contradictory to likely the God who was actually leaning out. I didn't want to sing. I didn't want to raise my hands. I didn't want to pray. Why would I? I'm pretty sure that this God doesn't want to be anywhere as near me. But hear me, that was the fever talking. Social distancing is the exact opposite of who Jesus is, what he's about, and what he wants to do in each of our lives. Just look at the relationships Jesus had while he was here on earth. Consider Levi, the tax collector. Talk about coronavirus. Or Mary Magdalene, so deep into prostitution, so dark, she was filled with demons. Or how about James and John? Big egos, loud and boisterous, always looking to be in the limelight? Peter, the emotional hothead, never thinks before he speaks, always lashing out, even denied knowing Jesus. Zacchaeus, a thief, a racketeer, a con man. Don't forget Judas. Talk about coronavirus. The night the guards came to get him in the garden, Judas leaned in with a kiss to betray him. And Jesus didn't pull back. Even in that moment, Jesus leaned in. Listen to the reputation of Jesus found in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 19. He's the son of man and he came eating and drinking, some said. Look at him, a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. When Jesus sees our corona, our sin, he doesn't social distance. In fact, he does quite the opposite. Which leads me to point number two, Jesus leans in because of your corona. Luke chapter 19, verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The reason Jesus came was because of Corona. He wasn't distancing. In fact, he kept pushing forward. 1 Timothy 1.15 says, The saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am foremost, 
Your corona was, is, and always will be the reason Jesus came. It's why he's here, and it's why he'll never leave you or forsake you. He's not distancing. He's actually leaning in. In John chapter 4, Jesus left Judea and departed for Galilee. In verse 4, it says something fascinating. And he had to pass through Samaria. Samaria is not on the way to Galilee from Judea. In fact, it's out of the way, off the beating path, one way up, one way in, and one way back, climbing an elevation of 2,500 feet. But the Bible says Jesus had to go there. Why? There was someone he needed to meet, a woman who was waiting by a well, infected with coronavirus. She had been married five times and divorced. And now she was living with her sixth man. Hear me, that did not repel him. It attracted him. He engaged her in conversation. He leaned into that relationship like he leans into every other life impacted by sin. It is the lie of the enemy that says he doesn't. It is the lie of the enemy that says we should be afraid of God. It is the lie of the enemy that says we should hide, that we should run the other way. The enemy doesn't want you to get the help you so desperately need. The enemy wants you sick. The enemy wants you struggling. The enemy wants you dead. The enemy wants you to live with coronavirus, with sin, for you to feel naked and exposed, embarrassed, insecure, ashamed, to live in shame, hiding behind some ridiculous loincloth. Instead of dealing with the issue, instead of dealing with the emotions, instead of dealing with coronavirus, he would rather for you to hide it all. Something to keep others from seeing what you've done and how you actually feel. Something to keep you from running to the one who can heal you, Jesus. Because if you do, and this is point number three, Jesus eradicates the coronaviruses of our life. Jesus healed everyone everywhere that he came into contact with. Matthew chapter 4, 23 through 24, and he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he leaned in and he healed them. John chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, there was a man who was blind. And the Bible says, Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed, and he came back seeing. Jesus actually touched the man's eyes. In Mark chapter 8, verse 23, there was another blind man. It says there that he took the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village, and when he had spit on his eyes and then laid his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And there in those verses, we discover that Jesus heals his disease by touching him. In John chapter seven, there's a man who cannot hear and has a speech impediment, and he approaches Jesus. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up at heaven, he sighed and said, be opened. And his ears were opened and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. Jesus reached in and touched this man as well. Matthew chapter eight is a story about lepers. Certainly you don't lean in and touch lepers. But a leper approached him and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, I know you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing, be clean. And immediately the leprosy was cleansed. All of these things were accomplished as Jesus leaned in and touched people's lives. And as you read farther, he doesn't just eradicate the outward coronas, 
he eradicates the inner coronas as well, things that are deeper than leprosy. Issues of the heart, issues of the mind, issues of people's past, the insecurities, the deceptions, the coronas of life. The more time Jesus spent with people, the more their lives were transformed for the better. And that's certainly true of our lives as well. I have found the closer he comes and the more work he does to remove the infection known as sin from my life. He doesn't just forgive me, he eradicates sin from my life. There's two things that I would like to see happen right here and right now. First, for those of you who feel like God has been distancing himself from you because of your coronavirus, because of your number two, because of your sin, I want to challenge you to speak truth to that lie that God is not distancing himself from you. In fact, he's leaning in and he's inviting you to lean in as well. And in those moments when we know we have coronavirus, instead of running away, I want to challenge you to do the opposite to your instincts. That means that every time I have corona, that means that every time I have corona, every time I do a number two, while everything within me screams, run, hide, get away, I'm going to run towards the promise of God. I'm going to lean in, trusting that God will receive me, trusting that he will forgive me, trusting that he will eradicate this thing that causes me to sin. That means that every time I have corona, while everything within me screams, run, hide, get away, I'm going to lean in, trusting that God will receive me, trusting that he will forgive me, trusting that he will eradicate this thing that causes me to sin. Secondly, for those of you who have never leaned in or haven't been leaning in during this season, it's time. I'm inviting you to lean in to Jesus. Lean in because of today's coronaviruses. Lean in because of the ongoing coronaviruses. It's time to allow Jesus to be Jesus in you. The one who can help you and to eradicate all of the sin in your life. Some of this will happen immediately and some over time. It most certainly requires your participation. But don't just lean in. Lean in with your corona. Present it to him and say, Lord, I need your help. After all, that's why Jesus came. Let me go ahead and pray for you. Father, I thank you for everyone listening. I pray that right now you will help us to see clearly the working of the enemy, the lie that says that God has been social distancing with us because of sin. In fact, Lord, we make up our minds right now when we hear that lie moving forward, that we will speak to that lie with the truth of the word of God, that you came because of our sin. And in fact, you're not leaning back, you're leaning forward. And Lord, we make our declaration today, moving forward, I'm gonna lean in as well. Father, I also pray as we lean in, we don't just expect to be forgiven, we're asking you to do what you've promised, to eradicate the sin in our lives. Lord, I know that some of that's gonna happen instantly, and some is gonna happen over a period of time, but we're believing you to help us to overcome these things that would keep us sick, these things that would isolate us, these things that would keep us in hiding, so that we can live the life that you promised in John chapter 10. Not just surviving, but living abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. A hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I'll raise a hallelujah. Melody. Now raise.
contact us on our church website. You will find updated lists of content release times there for you. Stay safe and we'll see you online at home.